Well, good evening. It's good to have everyone here with us tonight. Let's take our hymn books and we'll get right into singing a hymn together. Hymn number 348. I'll let you remain seated as we sing first, second, and last stanzas of My Savior's Love. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wondered how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall end. We say good evening. Good to see everyone. All those that are tuning in, thank you for being with us. Let's open in a word of prayer. Almighty God and our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this day, this time. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus, Lord. What a great and wonderful thing he's done for us. I praise you. Just bless us now, Lord. May you be glorified in everything it's said and done, the songs, the preaching. May you be receive glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn over to hymn number 493, and I'll let you remain seated as we sing together, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. 
singing out tonight. Well, that's what we're here for. Praise God, saying glory to his name. That's what we want to do. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking from the book of Philippians, if you will. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. There we're going to see what the good Lord wants us to see. This is a very special session, a, a scripture, if you will, because we want to see what God has to say. So in Philippians chapter 2, I'll start reading in verse 1. And there the Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself in no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. One second. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you rejoice and have joy and rejoice in with me. And let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the great love, the word of God you're showing us, Lord. This shows what the children of God should live like, how they should look at one another, how they should treat one another. So help us to learn from this, Lord, and we'll praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let me start out by saying, in the church, what this is talking about is how we really, how we treat each other, how we look at each other. Am I better than some or some better than me? Not in God's hierarchy, we're not. But we are true servants of God, and we, He has given us a way of looking at it. Because of what he did himself. See, when he came, he laid aside his, his deity, not his deity, but his Lord and glory. He laid aside what he had spent all through, back through eternity being like. And he came and he became a man. Did that take his deity away? No. But he was God the Son in, in the flesh as he even come to this world. But he's showing us 
What will our lives, or what should they be like? How would we look at other people? Well, the easy way to look at that is just we should model the life of Jesus. See what Jesus says. See how he operated, how he handled himself. He came in love. He came in total commitment, if you will, to love his children. And by the way, he was the creator. He was with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He was with them in creation. But he came as a man. You know how they treated him. You know how bad it was. Why would anyone not recognize him? All the miracles he did. All the things that he helped people. He showed love. Do we have that type of love in our world today? I think sometimes in churches. To be a true church, to be one that truly loves God and wants to serve God, we have to show that love. I'm not better than any other, nor are they better than I am. But we can work together. We can trust God, and we can serve one another. You might have a need where you'd say, I need help in this. That's when the church of God, that's when the Christians need to step forward. Say, I want to help you. I'll help you in whatever way I can. And that's what God expects of us. Because if he came and lay aside his robe, his uh, place in heaven, and he came, and he became just a man. Now, he was still God the Son, but he walked among men. And they did not treat him, not with any respect, not with anything. In fact, they finally took him to his death. But God, folks, God was with him all the way. And when we, we come to this church and worship, we have to look up to him because he set the standards. He led us in a path of righteousness for his name's sake, not ours. Who am I to claim any position or power? I can't because I'm only a servant of Jesus Christ. If people had learned that in churches, I've been in churches where they, where they would fight, most of it is over position. Who am I to claim a position? I stand behind this pulpit because God put me here. Other than that, I'm just, just like the rest. But God's given me a position to preach the gospel, and that's what I want to do. But I'm not better than anyone, nor are they better than I am. So let me ask you this. What will it be with us when we have to deal with other people? Some are not easy to deal with. Now, you know that as well as I do. But we still have to show love and compassion. We need to have concern. We have to trust God to show us the right way. But Paul says, I want you to fulfill my joy by the way you act in the church of Jesus Christ. The Philippians, they were known to be a good people, but they had those spats among themselves many times, and Paul is trying to address that. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Strife is fighting. Vainglory is look at me, I'm on a pedestal, look what I have done. But God says, that's not what I intended for church. That's not what I intended at all. And that's what Jesus says. I don't want anyone to try to be on a pedestal. Because you know what's always been said. If you climb on a pestle, it's a good chance you're going to fall off. But God, his desire that we be true servants. True servants say, I will do take whatever God lays in my hand, and I want to serve him in that. That's what servants are all about. We are supposedly are to walk with him. And when he gives us a command, we say, yes, Lord. I want to obey. I want to serve. I don't want a position, power. I want to serve the true and living God. Folks, we'll do that. We'll find happiness. We'll find God's spirit within that really picks us up. I guess one of the great things in my life 
as far as, as serving is seeing people come to the Lord. That just absolutely just picks me up something great because that's a new creature in Christ that will be in heaven with all of us that know him. And that's what he wants us to do. Now, he had several sections that I thought is worthy to, to look at. I'm going to go back to Ephesians chapter 4 for a moment. And there the Bible says in verse 1, Ephesians chapter 4, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord to beseech you that you walk worthy of the occasion wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with longsuffering, forbearing one another in love. Lowly in weakness and meekness, how long-suffering. Do we have short fuses? Do we say, I just can't take this anymore? You know what he did or she did? I just can't take this anymore. Who are we? How does God look at us? Would he say, yeah, you're the one on top. Yeah, you're better than the rest. Do not get that from God. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Unity. That is one of the great keys of the church. Unified. Unity. That we can all come together and work together and receive from God our marching orders. And we can walk together. We can trust Him and we can lift up our fellow man. And we can show the love of God. If we'll do that, we are doing the work that God gave us to do. There's one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling, you don't see any special, this and special or that and special. One body. We are in the body of Christ. And we are called to do his work, to walk with him. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There are no special places. There is only those that are true servants of Jesus Christ. I'd rather be a servant than to be on a pedestal or try to build myself up to something I am not. Because I'm only a Christian. I'm only one saved by the grace of God. I'm only that one that God has called. He's got a gift for every one of us. He's got a place for us to serve. One God and Father of all, He is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. God knows how he has made us. God knows how we can be effective, and we can be by that gift he's given us. Don't try to reach over and you take someone else's gift. You're not made for it, but you're made for the gift that God has given you. Not all can sing. Not all can, can preach. Not all can teach. Not all can, can do the work in a church in a way that's pleasing to God. Specific gifts, specific uh, in endurance, specific trusting in God, depending on Him. So the the question is, will we do what God's called us to do? Don't mind things our own things, but every man also the things of others. We have to look at one another. First thing we have to see in each other. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I trust in Jesus. He saved my soul. I want to fit in exactly where he wants to put me. I can't push someone aside because I want a certain place or a certain uh, position. God's not in that. God puts us all in a, in a, a servant mode, a servant place of, of serving him. Let us not try to cross the bounds that he's never given to us to do. That's like, uh, well, people. Some people can sing and the rest of us can't, but still God. You know, he's got a place. I can make a joyful noise, and that's pleasing to God if that's what he's given me to do. And that's what we need to do because he is God. He knew how to make me. He knew how to to to. Fill me with his spirit. He knew exactly what I can do and what I can't. And it was service to him. But we cannot let the devil try to build us up, pump us up. Showing us, yeah, you're better than the rest. Best thing to do is go to God and ask him. 
Lord, can I do this or can I do that? Can I be effective in this? If you'll ask, he'll show. Don't go out on a limb by ourselves. That is a very sad place to be because God. There is times he will draw us back. He will touch our hearts and show us what we are and what we're not. I thank God. Look, my whole thought and desire in life is that I can be humble because I don't have what it takes to be great. I don't have all of that. Humility, total submission, total unto God, obedience. That's what he's asking for. Will we wait on him? Do we truly wait on God? Do we trust him? Do we say, Lord, I don't know where you're going to send me this day. I'm willing. I want to step forward in what you desire me to do. I want to serve you. I want to be, be one that can show forth the love of God to those around. Lost people. Lost people. And I think that's probably one of the greatest things in my life is to is lead people to the Lord. Do I have all the answers? No, but God does. And if he's there with me, it's going to work out good. But he goes on, he says, but Jesus Christ, he made himself of no reputation, although he was God the Son. And he took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. How many people in our day want to be servants? How many people say, I want to, I want to be at the very bottom because I know it's where God wants me to work? You know what? There are people that are saved at the bottom. What I'm getting at is servants of God. If you're at the lower section, if God leads you to a person and you show them a way of salvation, look what a great thing we've done in the name of Jesus. But he took upon himself flesh. He was found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Humbled himself. That is something that needs to be preached and taught so much in our churches today. Humble. Humility. Who am I? What do I have to offer? If it's not with Jesus guiding me, I have absolutely nothing to offer. But it is as he puts his word in my heart. It's as he touches me. As he sends me. As he gives me the strength and power to do exactly what what he's asked me to do. But will we? Or do we want to be on the pedestal? Do we want to say, "I'm look at me, I'm something great. I like humility. I really do. I like people of humility. I like people say, I'm nothing but God's everything. I will go exactly where he wants me to go. But he says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And that's the name of Jesus. Look, that's what we're looking for in this world, to be true servants of Jesus. When we look how he walked his face of this earth, how he was treated. Have you ever suffered because of your faith? Maybe in word or, or maybe even in deed. But blessed are those that will stand up in the name of the Lord. Those that will face persecution but still have it. That great love of God in their hearts. Pray for those that persecute you. Pray for those that maybe treat you wrong. Pray for them. And don't strike back. Because just look at Jesus. He never struck back. He went to that cross. He suffered. And he died on that cross. You know why he could do that? He knew, the, he knew what the outcome's going to be. His death is what brought your salvation and my salvation. What will we be without salvation? Like the rest of the world out there. Those people that will not listen, they won't allow Jesus to deal in their hearts. But we, true servants of God, people of God, accepted Jesus Christ, we can walk and we can have assurance, we can have faith, and we can feel his presence in us. I would hate to think that I ever got behind his pulpit 
that I didn't have God's assurance. That I wasn't doing what he has asked me to do. That I would give myself to him. Folks, I think we all need to see ourselves for exactly what we are. Saved, but not perfect. If I'm perfect, it's only because of what Jesus has done. But the perfection, it has come from growing day by day, more like Jesus, receiving from him and letting him work through us, letting him control our mouth. Have you ever went up, I've done this several times before, walked a person that needed the Lord. I really didn't know what to say. It didn't take long that he put them words in my mouth. Because what's the greatest words we could speak to a lost person? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about that one that can give you saving grace. No, we don't have all the answers. But in that moment, God can put the very words in your mouth. It's not us. It's all him. I wish the world could see that. I wish the world could get humility. I wish the world could really grasp all what God and what Jesus is all about. And it's not about us. I'm just a servant. I like to think about that, that I am not anything great, special in my own self. But I'm made more than a conqueror through him who loved me and died for me. What's going to come out of all that? Think about this. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. You know what he's saying there? He was the creator of all those. All things will exalt him. All flesh will exalt him. Why? Not all of them are saved now, but they're going to have to bow before him and recognize him as the son of God. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is for us now. But think about working up to that point in life or even after life and have to face that. You know people, and I know people, that will probably be there in that. Maybe not even wanting to. But they will have to confess that he truly is the Son of God and give him glory. But many of them, they'll go into the lake of fire. And they'll burn forever, ever and ever. I guess when we say those words, if you're like me, you can think of some people that you would say, oh, why will they not turn to him before it's everlasting too late? Why will they not give their hearts to him? Why they walk away? Well, they, well, they say, I've heard that story about Jesus before. Don't really believe it. Well, there's coming a day. They'll have to face it. Life is not a bed of roses. Life is just what, one thing, what we make it in the fact that we will say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Yeah, we'll suffer some things. We'll be mistreated. But just look what awaits us. Look what awaits us in God's heaven. I found a couple more verses I want to use. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Walk in him. Rooted and build it up in him. And establish in the faith as you've been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Those two verses are on Sharon's uh, uh, room in her Sunday school class. They're on a, a place that, uh, or a thing that we made there. Learning about Jesus. Being taught about Jesus. Being taught about what God requires of us and what he expects of us. Don't ever tell God I can't. If he gives the strength and power, we can do it, can't we? We can jump over a mountain if he says we can but we have to trust him. We have to look to him. Beware lest any man spoil you th- through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you follow. 
Because the world don't have the message that God has given to us. That's why we dig into the Word of God. That's why we learn more of Him each and every day. That's why we give all to Him. Lord, I don't really don't have anything to offer, but I know you living within me. I'm made more than a conqueror. I can go down the path that you want me to go. I can walk up to a man, maybe as lost as he can be, and I can say, let me tell you about the Jesus that's done so much in my life. He saved my soul. He brought me out of death, out of hell, if you will. And he set my feet on solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Is there anything better than that? I don't think any of us could ever face anything better than that. We have to trust him. Now back to the church. May we be a people that look upon each other as, as good, if not better, than us. People that we can say, I love you. I want to be your brother, your sister in Christ. I want for us to worship together. I want us to live closely because we have, we have Jesus in our hearts. That will be the church he'll bless. Fussing and fighting in churches, I've seen it, and you probably have too in different places. That will not honor God. I know we've been in one church that completely went out of business because they couldn't get along. Now, was God in that? No, he wasn't. What he wants is his church set on a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ, that we can reach out to people. We as, There's a sad world out there. There's people out there that are killing each other and still putting their faith in Jesus Christ. What will we do? If the need comes up, if he puts us in a position, what will we do? How will we operate? with the gifts that he's given us. We would say, yes, Lord, here am I, send me. I know it's got to be a hard place over there. But I know if you're with me, I can conquer, and I can bring forth whatever that you'll work in me to do that. And he will, folks. He will. If you look at your life right now, I'd say most have been saved many years. Look what he's brought us through. Look what, look what he has done in us. And he's not finished yet. Can I say that? Because he wants us to be true servants. To be a servant to God is a great place to be. Because we've already been taught by Jesus. We've already been shown the right way. We've only got better things to see. I look forward to heaven, don't you? I mean, I really do. I look forward to heaven because I can just imagine. I look to meet each one of y'all up there. We can look at each other and say, well, we made it, didn't we? Only through Jesus, only through Jesus, we can hug one another. We can enjoy being with one another. We're going to see loved ones, parents and brothers and sisters up there. Wow, what a day that will be when our Jesus we will see. And let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We pray your, your blessing upon each one's here, Lord. I know there's a lot of problems all around us in this life, but we have Jesus. We have the Father that is right with us. He stands by our side in hard times. And we know that your presence is there. And we thank you for that. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the ones that came and all those that are tuned in, Lord. Thank you. We praise you and love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.